Now, two weeks ago, I made a video on Portugal's golden visa in 2022 and the changes that are coming into effect. A few of you have asked me to make a video, in particular those from the United Kingdom, which has left the European Union and the single market, about Portugal's D7 visa. So today I will describe what the D7 visa is, um, what are the requirements and the advantages and disadvantages. So let's briefly look at what the D7 visa is. So the D7 visa, in effect, gives you long-term residency status in Portugal to non-EU, EEA, Swiss citizens. Now, it is known as the passive income visa because you have to show that you have the financial resources during your stay in Portugal. The visa gives you the right to live, work, and study in Portugal, and it can be an excellent um, Portugal retirement visa option as well. What I think is pretty key is that it is a pathway to Portuguese citizenship and an EU passport after five years, and it's an opportunity to apply for Portugal's non-habitual resident tax regime status. So having briefly described what it is, who's eligible for this? Well, anybody is eligible for this so it doesn't it really really doesn't matter about the country you're from other than eu eea or switzerland where you have the right to stay here anyway you're not restricted from any other countries which is very very good you can include dependent family members of the primary applicant now the key is you have to have the financial you have to meet certain financial requirements which i will describe um in the next minute or so. What is also important is that you must be willing to live in Portugal for at least six months of the year and have no criminal record. So let's talk about the financial requirements and the passive income needed. Well, this is based on Portugal's minimum wage. So government minimum wage, which in 2022 is going to be 8400 hundred and sixty euros a year now if you have a dependent adult let's say a spouse add an extra four thousand two hundred and thirty euros a year and for any dependent children so for any dependent children each single one add an extra two thousand three hundred and fifty eight euros a year so um what i also want to say is that even if you're the main applicant and you're not earning passive income of 8,460 euros a year. It doesn't automatically disqualify you because let's say your spouse could make up the difference. So if let's say um, you're earning 7,000 euros a year in passive income, your spouse is earning 6,000 euros, that would take the total to 13,000 euros, which is above the total of 12,690 euros needed a year for um, the main applicant and the spouse. One thing you should do is please keep as much documentation as possible on um, records of what you've been earning. Now, what is ac acceptable as passive income? Well, I'll just briefly go through them. So it's interest from savings, royalties, dividends from a business that you don't actively manage, dividends from shares, um, rental property income, annuity, um, very important, a retiree pension, and other, generally other regular investment income. Now, unfortunately, income from professional employment, including remote and freelance work, will not be considered when you're applying. However, there's no restriction on employment once you have residency. Now, how long does this um, D7 visa last? Well, the D7 residence, once you've got it, will permit you to stay for two years. After that, you can extend for three um, years if you still meet the D7 requirements. And after five years, as I've said, it can be a path to becoming a Portuguese citizen. Now, what are the benefits? Well, um, the benefits are pretty good. You don't have to make a massive outlay investment like in, a, in property or put a lot of money in a bank. So you don't, there's no huge outlay here as there is with a golden visa. Um, also, um, it gives you access to the public health healthcare system. As I've said, you can live and work in Portugal. You have your entry and freedom to travel in 
uh, Schengen area and 26 European countries. Uh, you can register for the non-habitual um, resident scheme. Um, also, um, you're, as I've said, you're entitled to Portugal's education, education system, and you don't need to meet any kind of language criteria. Now, what I will say, obviously, the, the major disadvantage, you have to stay six months per year in um, Portugal. So uh, you really have to commit really to Portugal, unlike the golden visa. And also a lot of you are, will not meet this criteria as well because it's difficult to have so much passive income. Anyway, that's it for today. I thought I'd make this video because a few of you had requested it. Um, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you very soon on the next video. Bye for today.